Now, as I said, uh, we had some issues with, uh, with the talk tonight, so I just wrap up a very quick introduction. So basically, uh, in the last few meetups, we had, like, people have some questions about how can I just start in Haskell. And we had issues with the, the, the syntax. So tonight, we're going to have a quick look about the syntax, try to understand how to write a function, and at least read the slides of the talk we have, we're going to you know, present here. So it will be a very, very gentle introduction to have to syntax. So well, this, this, this talk is basically, it's like, it, it's okay, no more excuses. So it's not complicated to try to run Haskell. I know there are plenty of like online uh, raffles that you can try, you know, I used to, to start to run some Haskell, but they're very limited. So the first thing I would like to talk about is this command. So after you pull after you pull uh, that, that, that Docker image, you can just run that. I'm going to familiar with Docker. You basically start a shell, you delete the, the container as soon as you, you go out, and, and then you basically run GHCI. Okay? So, no more excuses. Now, with just that command, you can run the latest version of, of Haskell. Okay? Please. Are you going to share the slides? Yeah, every time. Okay, there are two ways to get the slides. One, the same GitHub repository with all the proposal will contain the slides of every single talk that is happening in this, in this group, and also the meetup page. We try to, there's also will be a video, uh, there's not many viewers, maybe two or three viewers, <laughs> but at least we keep an archive on that, okay? So yeah, it will be fine. So, uh, this command works, as soon as you write that down, you jump into a We are all familiar with REPL, right, okay? Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know, every time you see a record in Haskell, everybody keeps showing this command. But... Oh. Uh, so let's try the command. Yeah. Yeah. Want to make it a little bigger? Come no, on, I'm six-way. I like small because I can have more stuff on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will see your mistakes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I just created like, ten, like half an hour ago a directory A to a B in particular. More. Okay, hands. And hands. So basically, that's the command of the slide. It's very simple, right? We're going to call GHCI. So when you run this command, boom, you're inside, uh, you're inside the GHC record. So, as I showed earlier on, you can do like uh, one by plus one, but you can do the same thing with Python, right? I don't think with Python you can do uh, for something like this, I don't know, but it works here, okay? Now, uh, one thing we can do in Haskell, so basically, why we're into this shell? Because uh, this command is equivalent to this. Okay, so basically every function, so plus is a function. And as you can see, we are applying the first argument, the second argument to just get the same result as you know, this thing. So if you're new to, to Haskell, sometimes when you have symbol, you see this notation with the parentheses. That's just a fancy way you don't have the operation in phase. Okay, so every time you see the parentheses like this and people doing that, that is the reason. So for instance, let's introduce another uh, wrap of thing that you, I personally use all the time. It's for instance T. If you want to interrogate like query about a type, uh, you normally say this, right? Because that is the way to specify, oh you know what? Please tell me the type of this one. We will see this in a second. So actually you see this now. So basically, uh, as I said, this command is basically querying about the type. It's asking uh, for whatever expression we have on the right hand side. What is, the, what is the type? So in Haskell, we have this symbol. So when you have this, that means that whatever happens after is actually the type of whatever you, you have here, okay? So in this case, forget about for a second new name, but this is the signature of the function plus. Now, I remember like two meetups ago, we had an issue about trying to understand what Mark was saying about the function, okay? So that's why tonight we're going to have a quick look about functions. Because functions in Haskell are basically everywhere. Okay? So, because everybody knows Python, 
this is the equivalent of add. So this symbol here is this add to integers, okay? So we write the same thing here, and then this is an implementation, for instance, when we run it, you get three. It's not exactly like that. This is what there's way more constraints here, okay? I don't remember if you remember, I don't know if you remember like the three parts ago. We say that these A's are a type, so there's a type constraint. So we know that whatever we have here and here is the same as in here. Now, before we get into type and the constraint, I'd like to mention the fact that these two are these two, and this is the return type. Do you remember there was that misunderstanding about that? So basically, in Haskell, you have um, uh, this is the return type, and these are the, the argument of the function. And I don't know if you remember we talked about sign, there's the curry. So we can actually partially apply to the function. Are we, I mean, those things are kind of obvious or no? Yes? No? What, um, yeah, I'm question. A is generic type. What can frame it? Because I'm sure you would admit it doesn't make sense to have a plus on a frame. So what can frame it to? Yeah, that's a good point. So the constraint is actually here. Has to be a noun. For instance, this function is actually, thank you for actually bringing up uh, what is called like type classes in Haskell. So basically we are saying this A must be a noun in order to plus to operate. Okay. Got so you. the implementation of this plus works only for none. And then there is a taxonomy of none, there's so many nouns, integer, integral, double, flow. So yeah, that is, that is the thing. But for the sake of, oh, oh, for the sake of, uh, yeah, this slide, I want to just show the fact that that was not clear on the last time. The fact that these are arguments and the last, these are the types of the arguments, and this is the type of the, the return type. Okay? That in, in Python is very hard to see that. We don't define types, we don't define the return type, so, so that, that is the reason. Can I ask a question? Sure. Anybody? How do you read that as a, like a mathematical statement? You know, like when you got a set, say, the set of all x such that you know there's a way you can mechanically do that. How do you do that? The way I look at it is like so you take your function initially and you feed it its first argument and then you've got a state where it holds one argument and then you feed it the second argument and then it knows how to. Produce. What he's saying is this. So basically, what he's saying is this. Let's say I have this plus and this one. Okay, this is an expression. So basically, we have the plus operation. And we just apply one. So what we get back is a function from another A and give us back an A. Okay, so it's this. So it's uh oh, is that why it's not it actually works. Yeah, if you look at every arrow, think of the, the right hand side as the return type. What you're actually seeing is like A returns a function, which takes A and A and A returns a function. So what what they're saying is that if you look at the plus. Yeah. Not applied at all, you have the three A's. Oh, so but if you apply one to the first A, you okay, so get a function. What, 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 made, it, what made it clear for me is that is, is learning that actually Haskell, every function only takes one argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the auto currying is what makes it look like you take more than one function. So what you're actually doing is A returns a function which returns an A as a. Yeah, I was trying to don't get into too much into curry, but actually it, we need to, because otherwise it doesn't make sense. Yeah, from, right. but, but from an object oriented curry perspective, that makes sense. Well, but I think what you want to know is yeah. how do you read that? How do you read it? How do you read I don't it? want to like, explain, if, I don't want to exemplify it. If you, you had it sitting in front of you and you had to tell somebody that, how would you say it? How do you pronounce the word? How do I pronounce the word? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I see like a function from A to A that gives you back an A. Constrained by number, so. Constrained by yeah. the that has, has type of, yeah. Yeah, it's like, okay. it's like why, why wouldn't you just take a whole sentence and say, plus the function that takes two nouns and returns a noun? That's not what it says, like, it's not like reading it character by character and then string, but that's what it does. I think you can say that it's not like plus, but that's, that's what plus does in this it's like put betting all of the currying and blah blah blah. You could you could pronounce the air as like five. Well, also the other reason why I think that you don't write it that way is for a function that takes two arguments is because you could take that function and just give it one argument rather 
right? Yeah. And that has logical meaning in Pascal to say, give me, I give you a function, one argument, you give me that function that takes another argument, basically just like an operator, where like in Python, I give a function that takes two arguments, you give a given one, it's not sensical, like, like Python, there's no, there's no logical interpretation of that. Yeah, so basically what you say is like this, I can call, oh, E is basically the partial you know, application of plus with just one. And then we know what's happening when we do it in for us. That's exactly right. And you can basically read those arrows as return. Yeah. It takes a type of A, it returns an A. Yeah. And the up end of plus, it takes a type of A, returns a function that takes an A, and then returns exactly. an A. Exactly. Yeah, which is really helpful to clarify is pretty much from this ground, but we don't see that because it's actually going Right. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it's good. At least we know now on when we show like Haskell like, code, we know roughly what a function is, okay? So, the second and uh, important thing that we always have to see in Haskell like, in our presentation is lists. So, okay, this is the way you represent the number of lists, you know, uh, with the, the square bracket. One thing that I'd like to mention is uh, infinite lists, so from one to you know, infinite, you can have a, uh, as we said, uh, Haskell is a lazy, is a non strict like, language, so we can have like, like infinite type of structures. And same thing here, little thing here, we have like all the numbers from 1 to 10. And one thing that I like in Haskell sometimes, especially when you do like, uh, you know, some examples, stuff like that, you can actually, I don't know if you can see what it's doing here. It's basically going from 1 to 4 by uh, from, like 1 to 4 increments. Uh, is there, so I, I assume there isn't because. It doesn't make logical sense for lazy evaluation, but is there a floating point version of that? So, like, if you do 1.0 and then continue for decimal numbers, that's right. Try. Like that, so, I can't let me get that wrong. What you say is this like this plus full stuff. Yeah. Maybe they want to just handle it at like their natural numbers again, but. But we have this. We can have, I don't know, we can have, uh, uh, draw, let's say, <laughs> okay. So it actually does it to some level of floating point precision. That is really interesting. Yeah. It does the smallest increment in you know, actually uh, I don't really know the precision from the top of my head or what. Anyway, we can take this offline, but yeah, it's yeah. going to the smallest precision. I haven't thought about that, yeah. So just to make sure I understand right, is it that this one comma three dot dot seven? So you mean something like this? No. 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 Ah, okay, gotcha. Hmm. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Sorry, just an example. To be honest, you never see this much in real code. You not normally see this or maybe this. <coughs> I don't know what's your experience or who's working on this. And the no. one that that is automatically lazy, so it just keeps going until it runs out of lit. Yeah, everything is lazy. So everything is um, unless you look into the thing. So now I'm in the ref. I'm actually looking into the thing. So let's say I'm going to do like a is equal to one, two, and three. Okay. If I press enter, a doesn't exist. So it can be like um, normally you do this. Boom. Now a exists. Check this out. Uh, there is sd. I mentioned this to somebody last time, and sd is nice because it doesn't look into the thing. So if you, it doesn't evaluate if it's not evaluated. So if I do now SP A, you get a, a thumb. So that's bad. Should they give me the whole thing? By the way, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, normally when you do SP, you get the thumb when you yeah, don't evaluate that. I'm expecting to go with this. Anyway. So I would like to quickly introduce one thing that we use all the time, especially when we deconstruct this. So colon is something like this. No, let me do something like this. We basically prepare the list. So if you want to create a list like this, okay, we start from the right. So we start from the oh, you can see that. We start from the right, the empty list, and then we build a list like prepending a you know. Your list, this guy, you love this stuff. So, 
Uh, same thing with the concatenation. You see this a lot, and maybe we can. Yeah, that's something that we can find online. Anyway, these are the, you know, the, the, the operators like you expect on uh, on a list. Now, why I put this in here? Not to everybody knows how our list work and all these guys are working, but it's just to have a quick look if you're running into community hassle, if you can actually try to understand what's going on. So head, okay, we know head, you get the, the, the first element, okay? So the first element is like A, if the list is a list of A elements, okay? So it makes sense now. This is a function that you give one parameter and you get back, you know, this return type. A, you pass a list of A, you get back a list of A without the first element. But it makes sense right now. You can see that if you're new to Haskell, you can see that now. Okay, take, you select how many <coughs> elements you want to take, and you pass the list, and you get back the list you know, of this size. And it's a new drop, but it's just normal. You can, you can go through the example but You know, you know what we're going to expect, right? So, does Haskell support like that? A literal list deconstruction syntax, like some languages have, like a you know. Well, I was thinking some languages have, like you, you put the square bracket h type t and then equal the list, and you know put the head of the list in h and the breadth of the tail. Okay, the, that is the, the deconstructing it. Yes, that's, yeah, of course. Okay. That's okay. Pattern matching. That's pattern matching. Yeah, yeah. 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 absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Absolutely. Okay, I was I was trying to dominate the pattern matching. Oh, to do only pattern matching or to avoid it because I was trying to make like a, a short oh, talk. No, 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 no. Sorry, I, I would love to say that because that's basically what you do all the time. Yeah. Pattern match all the time. But yes, you can do that. Yeah. Okay. We well, added. I, I would be surprised if you couldn't, but I, but I was just wondering. Actually, we can. Okay, these are the last two functions, then we are basically done. We can make an exercise, maybe we show you pattern matching. So, math, we are all familiar with math and fields, right? Even if we would never see them in Python, right? So, we don't see them. So, here is something different, okay? There the are parentheses. So, basically, we pass a function from A to B, we pass a list of A's, so we get a list of B. In the filter, we pass a predicate, so for, uh, we have basically placed a function from A to Boolean, and then we basically filter, you know, the list. That makes sense, right? Even if you're completely new to the Haskell syntax. Okay. Because this is what we need for the presentation, nothing else. And as I mentioned later on, another thing I really like is, is info. So I uh, we use it all the time instead of type it gives you way more stuff, way more information. Okay, sometimes even too much information. So, but apart from that, I'd like to quickly introduce maybe for example the matching L and, and R. So uh, before doing that, I don't want to start any war on editors, but <laughs> but <laughs> I'm an Emacs guy and there's no other editor apart from Emacs. But if you Use space Emacs, you can use VI and Emacs mode, and, and everything will work out of the box with the Haskell. We can use Google or GNC mode. All the tool chain is really there. Same thing with Atom and Visual Studio. The support is very, very good. But, and also you have ligature with Atom and Visual Studio. You know, all those fine, nice, fun things. But anyway, just to say that we're going to bring the second and last command for tonight, and then we're done. What I'm doing here, if you're completely new to uh, Docker, I'm adding a volume with a current directory into root inside a container. Yeah, that's for me, you just compile. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I'm running GCI, but I have my current directory inside slash root inside the container. So what that means, it's very simple. We can get that here and try to see if I have Okay, first of all, let me show you another thing. So I create a file, main.h. So basically, this is a, a Haskell file. Oh, by the way, do you see that? 
I'm pulling and I'm stuck. So basically, this is a, like a bash script. It's, it's a script. So you can run it, and this is the main, and it's going to print all this stuff, by the way. But that's for another book. So uh, this file, let's look at this guy. So I want to create, if you want, a reverse list function. So I'm defining the function with, you know, you give a list, you get the list back reverse, and then I, I don't provide implementation. Okay? So this is the file that is local on my machine, but I want to run that thing inside Docker. So let's say I haven't installed any Haskell in my box, here on my laptop. I'm going to run uh, Docker with that command. Boom. So what I need to do now to import the, the function, so let's say if I do this, type reverse list, okay? Oh, it's not in scope. Oh, by the way, there's a command, I don't think I'm using it, it's called bro. Actually, see what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bro, it's browse, but anyway. <laughs> uh, I found that funny, bro. Tell me everything you know. Full cool story, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so let's try to load the thing. So it's in root and auto completion works. Okay? I'm not that far. Boom, load it. So now if I do a uh, feature at least, we have it. Okay? What it means, it means that I have Atom here. 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 Oh, come on. Here we go. So it means that I, if I do something like, oh, you know what? I'm going to implement it reverse list. So if I have an empty list, I'm going to return an empty list. If I have, if I have one, a list of one element, I return a list of a list of X. Otherwise, there is the A that's made in the different sense. So basically, I'm saving this file, and I want to show that if I run R, I actually just reload whatever module I loaded. So now I can pull my reverse list of one, of course, of course it's reverse, and the list, but now if I pass the one, two, and three exception. Why? Because no one exhaustive pattern. So the pattern must say, oh, you know what, I don't know what to do, man. I, I, I did what you asked me. I, I, this is all I want to do. You know, I'm, I'm describing all the, the cases. It doesn't know what to do. Like, it's kind of like, it's kind of like. So I think now is the moment to keep in the pattern match, even if I didn't want to get that part because you asked. So what would be the next thing? Let's say we want to do, yeah, what you want to do? Mm -hmm. Implementation. What about implementation? I would just implement it. Oh, yeah. Do next <laughs> section recurse. So let's start with your idea using your implementation. So basically, we get uh, some, you know, list. We get the first element. Uh, actually, yeah, that's way. And then, what is the result? The result is actually x with what? Okay, it's like coding is not prepared, so please sure. forgive me, it doesn't work. I'm expecting to reverse the list, oh, right? I'm reversing the list, and I'm passing XS, right? Something like that. Probably, I don't know, right? right. I don't know, let's find out. Here we go, okay. Uh, Amy, yes. Ooh, why why is it work? Excess is just uh, it doesn't need breakfast. Oh, it got square breakfast on the left side and yeah. access or something like that. Or do that. Uh, you're right. I made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you want to have in the Thank you. So what is saying? I'll read the back, yeah, sure. That was the moment from the left. Okay, so let's load the thing here with the R, and then let's try it again. Yeah! So, the demo gods were nice with me, and <laughs> let me thank you guys, uh, implement this thing. So, oh, by the way, this is redundant, right? Uh, I don't know, let's try it. Yeah, it looks like it's done. Yeah, it's okay. Let me try again. What's in there? Yeah, okay. So, so basically, 
just take the side. Let's try to reverse it. We just did it. So I think this is very good if you want to start. So that's basically the purpose of, of this. Um, uh, oh, no, there's, there's an extra thing. That's the purpose of the presentation. No more excuses. So all you need is Docker. First, you can have a REPL. Second, you can actually have files on your machine, and you can run your REPL. You can start implementing functions. So that's it. No more excuses. So I'm going to leave with a little question that I heard on, on Meetup about uh, the first talk that Mark did on the first Meetup, that he, he mentioned this paper. Do you remember? And he presented like a few things, a few functions. So I don't know if you remember this function. How many implementations we say this function has? One. And Alan was very, oh yeah, yeah. So we have one, one implementation, right? This is the identity, the identity function. There's no other way to give something else. So there's no other way to implement two. Okay. The other question was this one. So two two, how many implementation we have in Haskell? In Python, in <laughs> but in Haskell. As far as I know, zero. There's no way to implement. Unless if you know how to implement this, please let me know. We write a paper together and we present a paper on how to implement this. <laughs> and same thing, what about full tree? I'm not, yeah, okay, I'm sure. Anyway, two, three, again, one implementation. We know that it's going to discard B because we're not using B anywhere. So it will be like identity function on this. So basically, this could be like full human type. I don't want to get to that. But the point is, what we put in the first argument, we get returned. And that was it. That was like an extra thing that we mentioned in the past. Yeah, sure. The second one, you say there will be zero possibility. Unless you have an implementation to propose. You can't know what B is. You yeah. can't know what you can return to be different. So like if B is an oh, implementation. Oh, this is a Zen exercise. I gotcha. It is Zen. So basically it's like, whoa. Yeah, I was kind of not following either of the whole Yeah, it's fine. I mean, again, this community is just us, so we'll be very friendly. So we can ask every kind of question and get every kind of wrong answer or right answer. So yeah, there is no implementation here. And you know, in a Scala or Java, you can draw an exception. Oh, no, specific. Wait a minute. There is an implementation value here. Run forever. No, there's still a function. Yeah. That takes type B, B and it does type A. Yeah. 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 It takes They're generic, right? Like, that will. Yeah, it's not the other type. So nothing yeah. else. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like. But they can't yeah. do it. Same. It's just two different types, and it converts any type to any other. Okay, let's let's make an example. Give me two like uh, type. Two types. Two types. Two types. Two types. Integer and, and string. Those types aren't specified. Flex numbers. There are no constraints there. Okay. So it's literally any other possible. Yeah, it's a function that takes literally anything, but has to return something that isn't that. But it can't know what the first thing is to make sure it doesn't have the first thing. It's a Zen. It's a Zen so slide. If it's going to stay in A, cannot be equal. They're speaking in general terms. Like in general terms, you can't know for sure what A yeah. is or what If Futu said B is a null and A is a string, then you can do that. Yeah, I probably not. I'd like to propose a two four. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two four is from int to A. And that is the same, yeah. It's the same as foo2. It's actually a, uh, a specialized version of foo2. Yeah, 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 I can have foo4, yeah, exactly. But look at Java. You can have, yeah, you can do like two string. Every single object has two string, hash map, or to an exception. But again, I, I was wrong. The only possible implementation of foo2 is, is a wrong around. That's the possible implementation. Or how the system or and the memory. Just for a universe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's perfectly valid. Absolutely. <laughs> but we're not mathematicians. I'm not no, a mathematician. Sharp Norris can run an infinite loop in 20 seconds, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. More Zen? Yeah. We're going to have a single <laughs> test of that. So, yeah. Thank you very much for the, the questions. And <laughs> So if you want to grab some food, take five, ten minutes, and then we're going to start with the, the main talk. Okay? Thank you, guys.